All right, gamers, welcome to my patch 13.18 ADC tier list. Tier list is right here. So if that's all you wanted to see, feel free to pause that and just leave. Uh, this video is going to be shorter than the previous one because I, I don't want to cover like all the builds that I did in the previous video. Uh, if you want to remind yourself what builds are good for each ADC, you can feel free to consult the previous video for that. This one is just going to be fairly short and cover the updates, which are not many. Uh, basically, the only placement change uh, in this tier list was Senna, which I'll cover later. Uh, but we're going to go through all the patch changes that affect the ADC meta this patch, and I'll run you through like my thoughts on them. So starting off for patch 13.18, we've got the Zaya buff. So base health decreased, health growth increased, equal down increased. Base health went down by 30, while health growth went up by 5 per level. This ends up giving her, I think, 90 HP at level 18. Uh, so you actually gained 60 HP overall late game on Zaya, which is okay. And then um, they also reduced the cooldown. No, sorry, increase the cooldown on her on her E in her early levels by two. But you still get the same uh cooldown at later levels at level five. Because you now gain one cooldown reduction per level instead of 0.5. So I actually misunderstood this nerf at first. I thought I thought they'd basically gutted Zaya, but I, I misread. I thought so I thought they they'd gutted or nerfed her health growth as well. I thought they'd both hit her like base health and then also hit her health growth, so I was like, oof, that's a fat nerf. Then uh, I looked at her win rate, and it only dropped by like 0.5%, and I was like, huh, that's weird. What did I miss here? And I saw, oh, this is a buff, not the nerf. So, yeah, she actually did not take a big hit. That is why she's still going to be at S tier here for me. Um, so um, it takes her at, like, I don't know, level... I think they said level 6. Yeah, they say... Where is it? Level 6, level 6. Here, have more survivability post level 6. So I take it that means that at level 6, she already has the same HP that she had before. And then from that point onwards, she has even more HP. So, I mean, if they were trying to take her out of pro meta, or even nerf her in solo queue, where they also said she's doing well, like, I mean, it's a weird approach, because this barely nerfed her at all. If you're going to nerf her, I don't know why you would also give her compensation buffs when she would have still been, like, okay, even without them. This basically just nullified a lot of the nerfs that they gave her alongside it. So it is overall still a net nerf, but it's a pretty light one at that. So I still have her as S tier in my tier list. Her win rate did not change much. I still think she's a very high performing ADC. Uh, aside from that, we've also got a buff to Senna. So Senna passive critical strike ratio reduction removed. W now applies passive to all enemies caught in the AoE. Uh, this is actually quite nice, by the way. I actually always thought it should work like that, even though it doesn't do damage in an AoE. It's just really nice. Uh, hard to say how big a contribution that is to her win rate increase, but it definitely feels nice in game if you happen to hit a AoE W. Uh, so the critical strike reduction no longer reduces critical strike damage by 8.5%. Um, that's actually huge on Senna, because even if you don't build any crit at all, you still have crit because of her passive, so even the uh, builds of Senna that don't build any crit at all, at least within the first two items, just, you know, double lethality start, for example, even those builds, her win rate increased by 0.5%, I think it was, which is a huge increase for a build that doesn't even build crit, right? And then I think her Kraken Slayer win rate, did that increase? It increased by at least 1%, maybe 2%? No, it was her ADC win rate that increased by 2%, I think, with crit items. But her support win rate increased by 1% with Kraken Slayer, and I think 1% with Fire Cannon Rush as well. <clears throat> and then I think her ADC win rate also increased by, actually, I think it might have been like 1.2% or so. Uh, with Static Shiv Rush. Uh, can't take that number too seriously, because very few people actually play Sun ADC, so, you know, those numbers are, like... Um, subject to change as uh, people play more Senna ADC, which they won't do much. But I think she's actually very, very strong now. It's I, I only mentioned the support data because I just wanted to get an idea for how big the buff actually was for any crit building Senna, and support actually has enough sample size to tell me that. And it was a pretty big buff. So I already had previously Senna, like not even at the bottom of C tier, I thought she was actually fairly okay. Um, 
and I was like, I would have tentatively already put her in B tier, but I wasn't 100% sure she belonged there. But now I'm, I'm, I put her at the top of B tier. I'm still, I'm even wondering if maybe she should not be in A tier. I'll uh, leave that until I either have more data as people play more Sun ADC on this patch with Static Ship Rush, or until I actually test it a bit more. I did already try her once, and she felt amazing. Well, I say once. I, yeah, I did a video on her which was like eight games, and she felt amazing in all eight games. Um, for the build that I would recommend on her right now is um, Static Shiv, obviously. You want to rush Static Shiv on Sun ADC because it just removes her biggest weakness of not having Wave Clear. And then either Navori or Infinity Edge, second item, both seem good now. I suppose you could do Ginsu's, I'm just not sure it's as good as the alternatives right now. Um, I would have previously been a big advocate of Navori, but after having tested Infinity Edge... I feel like Infinity Edge should probably be the better choice. Um, <clears throat> I would say Infinity Edge got disproportionately buffed compared to Navori because um, previously it was being really hampered by the fact that her crit damage was, you know, reduced. So building a crit amplifier on a champion with reduced crit, you know, it, it didn't make total sense. Whereas now it does. Um, and obviously that doesn't mean you have to build a crit amplifier, but... Uh, I did test it, I te well, so I could be a bit biased here because I only did one Navori game and then I did all the rest of the games Infinity Edge and the Infinity Edge felt fantastic, so it, uh, like I'm leaning towards crit being, or Infinity Edge being better, but at the same time, uh, basically all of my Navori testing is before the buff and all my Infinity Edge testing is after the buff, so it could be that if I actually did test Navori as much as I, test as I tested Infinity Edge, I would actually find that it was also similarly buffed by the change so i can't say for sure and there's obviously just not nearly enough data on that at the moment because nobody plays an adc but uh hopefully by next year next year list or next video or whatever i will have a better opinion on that either more testing to back up my opinion on navori versus infinity edge or people will actually play enough sun adc that i can actually tell from data which seems to be better <coughs> So yeah, I have her in B tier at the moment. Um, could maybe be higher, but obviously I, I will wait a little bit before making any knee-jerk reactions. But the top of B tier is basically what I would say is the absolute minimum for Sunday to see right now. Really surprisingly solid for a, a champion that most people just entirely disregard at the moment. Then next change we have... So it's that's all for the direct changes to ADCs. Then we just have the Storm Razor change and the Static Shift change. Start off with, uh, I guess we'll start off with Static Shift since it's at the top. So, they increase the AD by 5 while also decreasing the Wave Clear. It's now a permanent 200 damage to all minions. As opposed to starting at 250 and then scaling up to 350. So, the Wave Clear is significantly nerfed. So, I think a lot of people saw this as a gutting. But, uh, they also gave plus 5 AD, which as a combat buff is actually really good. And I think people also really overestimated the impact of this for example uh it does when you're using static shiv on coster minions it doesn't actually really matter whether it does 200 damage or it does 250 or it does 350 it, any number between 200 and one shot in the costers uh, or just short of one shot in costers is actually functionally the same because say i'm playing senna or aphelios or sivir or kaisa anything and say I get my static shift proc and I use it on the entire wave and it hits all three costers. All three of those costers are now one HP away from dying. That was true before the patch. Or sorry, one auto attack away from dying. That was true before the patch and it's true after the patch. You know? So this, this, like all of these numbers, they are all the same in terms of clearing the coster minions. Either way, it leaves the costers one auto attack away from death. So the only actual like way this nerf actually applies to wave clear is for the melees and the cannons. And obviously, since those are only about like half the wave, that is actually only about half the nerf that it actually seems. Uh, obviously, there is also the potential chance that uh, instead of auto attacking a minion to or auto attacking the costers to call them, your champion may have an AOE ability and. <clears throat> Um, maybe that doesn't do as much damage as an auto attack, 
But off the top of my head, I can't immediately think of where that would be the case. For example, Caitlyn Q almost one shots minions by itself. With static shift, it obviously does pre and post nerf. Uh, Sivir W even probably like as soon as you finish static shiv is probably already just clearing the caster super fast. Maybe there's some change there, but uh, it's not a huge one. Um, Kaisa Q, I haven't tested it yet, but I'm assuming Q will probably still one-shot the casters. Could be wrong there, actually. It does uh, maybe matter a lot for her. Let me just see. If I can't think off the top of my head. So for Ash, she'll still be one-shotting the casters. Nila Q basically one-shots casters by itself. So, well, I mean, Nila doesn't need static shift anyway. Um, which champion with Whiffler does use... Static Shiv. I mean, Sever Q obviously one shots the casters after Static Shiv. Uh, Senna Q will one shot the casters after Static Shiv. Lucian Q absolutely would. Not that he does it. Just on it doesn't really have proper wave clear. Jin Q absolutely one shots casters after Static Shiv. Yeah, basically any champion with that AoE wave clear is almost certainly going to be one shot of the casters after Static Shiv, regardless of whether it's pre nerf or post nerf. So it didn't actually do too much. Um, the only potential it has to impact wave clear is maybe you'll kill the melees and cannons a little bit slower. But, you know, that's about half the impact that you would initially think. So it's not that big a deal. And plus 5 AD, as I said, is actually pretty significant. It does help your DPS a lot. So uh, when I saw this nerf, I, w I wasn't like confident enough to 100% say that this does like this is, this is like a comp completely neutral change, potentially even buff. But after looking at data, it looks like I was potentially right. I'll just, uh, I went through um covering all the adcs that rush static shiv and seeing how or or potentially use it as a second item at the very least and just seeing how their win rate changed with static shiv after the buff or yeah, sorry change uh so vein's win rate with static shiv went down by minus two uh, minus 0 0.2 percent kaisa's went down by minus 0 0.1 percent caitlin went up by 0 0.2 percent Tristana went up by 0.1%, Sivir went up by 0.3%, and Zeri went up by 0.1%. So you can see there's some, like, some of the champions were nerfed, especially um, uh, Kaisa's, like, the most popular one, and her one rate actually went down with it. So I, I guess that probably lends itself to the fact that her Q probably actually did stop one-shotting casters, fair enough, after the static shift proc. But still doesn't seem to have affected her too much. Uh, then Vayne, I guess, also was like the ADC that actually wanted the wave clear the most because it is like her biggest weakness. And it helps to like cover up that weakness. So maybe for her, having such a significant... Well, having a nerf at all to the wave clear would hurt her significantly more than most other ADCs. But still, even then, it's only a zero, like 0.2% 0 change negative like it's barely anything and then you have these other adcs who i guess you could all consider them all as having pretty solid wave clear by themselves except i guess maybe zeri but at least caitlin and sivir those you know some of those adcs i mentioned who have aoe abilities to clear the costers with you know just one shotting them after static shiv they one actually went up because they didn't need that wave clear so they're just looking at the static shift changes and going okay disregard this oh i'm getting plus five ad oh sick what a buff nice they're just completely ignoring this because it doesn't affect them. They're just one shotting the casters anyway. No change at all. And even the melees might still like die at the same breakpoint anyway, to be honest. So some champions really just don't care about the change at all. For them, it's just a buff, arguably. So yeah, uh, that's the static shift change. I obviously don't think it's changed anything within the tier list. I don't think it was impactful enough just because... For the most part, it was very neutral, and even for champions who may have been negatively affected, it's just such a small deal. Even the buff to certain champions was so small, like it's not worth considering in my tier list, I don't think. And like maybe Sivir is like maybe higher than Kaisa now, or maybe higher than Misfortune, just minor changes like that, which is just not even really worth considering, because I don't even put that much thought into the exact placement here. Just that uh, more or less, I prefer to have the stronger champions at the top, and the weaker champions at the bottom. It's just a small consideration. <clears throat> and then the final change to this patch is Storm Razor plus 5 AD. <laughs> That's it. Just plus 5 AD. Um, it is a pretty decent buff. 
That being said, it was pretty weak on most champions before. So uh, once again, that doesn't really change much of my tier list. If this, if it turned for Storm Wizard from like terrible to like super broken, it would definitely have an impact on my tier list. I would have to change some placements. But for the most part, what this buff did was it just made it either as strong as their other item that they were already using, or it made it just very slightly stronger, but again, not enough to really impact the tier list. But uh, it is pretty nice that you now have it as a situational option, or just potentially better than other options on the on your ADC of choice. Uh, ADCs that Stormers would be good on. Uh, let's see, probably okay on Ash, should be okay on Zaya. Okay on Caitlyn, although I doubt it's as good as Static Shiv. Static Shiv is just so good on her. Um, it actually, so it, on, as far as Vayne goes, her win rate with Storm Wizard is actually absurd, which I was surprised by, and I was like, well, this doesn't make much sense. What, what, so if it's really good on her, surely it would have been really good on her in previous patches, or decent, at least decent on her in previous patches as well. So I checked it, and it actually was. It actually was already her highest win rate item, which I hadn't noticed. Um, let me see if I can pull that up here. Here we go. Um, so when we start the data by 30 days, you can see as far as first items go, it's actually slightly higher than Static Shiv, way higher than Kraken Slayer, way higher than Bork, way higher than Ginsu's, slightly higher than Trinity Force first item, way higher than Essence River, just higher than all the other, high, higher than all the other alternatives, very slightly higher than Static Shiv. Doesn't have a terribly high sample size in all fairness. 8,000 is not like terribly reliable, but at the very least, it tells us that. Uh, even if this were like a little bit off, which it might be, it's still like actually fairly decent considering this item was in a terrible state before. So when you give it a plus five AD buff, what do you know? Fifty-five percent win rate again. Two K sample size, very limited. That those numbers are subject to change, but it is. I'm guessing it's probably actually maybe her best uh, item rush at the moment. Now why that is, I. I'm not 100% sure actually, so I haven't actually tested it in a while. Uh, I rem they like really gutted the AD scaling on this, so I'm not actually sure whether the energized proc is supposed to deal less or more damage than the Static Shiv one, which actually scales with levels, whereas this one doesn't. This one just scales with AD, which Static Shiv doesn't, and I'm not actually sure which is supposed to deal like more damage at what points in the game. Um, so maybe this actually does more damage, like early levels, I'm not entirely sure. But it seems like probably at the very least one reason why it would be good with Fane <coughs> is that at the moment she has a playstyle that is like very like heavily leaning towards Q poke. Uh, that is why you can see also she has an absurd one with fleet footwork right now. Uh, pairs very nicely with static shift. Basically rush crutches shard. You run the fleet. Then whenever your energizer effects are up, you just Q forwards. Uh, go for a very quick trade and then just back off. And there's like very little things that that can out trade in like the time frame of one auto attack, a vein key with fleet with energizer, right? So basically, Vayne's goal is to land that one auto poke, and ideally, the enemies do minimal damage back to her, and she can just disengage before they can actually drag the trade out terribly. Because if you drag the trade out, that's where Vayne would stop shining with this playstyle. Uh, so Stormers are granting 45% movement speed for one second. I can imagine you're queuing forwards on Vayne, you poke them with one auto, and then you just, just zoom out before they can like retaliate at all. That is, So I actually know that this is how something can play out, because I used to do the same on Kai'Sa back when Storm Reserve, um was back in its broken state, when it's, it still gave 45% movement speed. I remember just doing those trades on her as well, where I would E forwards, Q auto, and they just sprint out, and they just couldn't retaliate. And that place all should be much more effective on Vayne than it should be on Kai'Sa. So I can absolutely see why it would be really good on her. The only thing I'm unclear on is whether this is supposed to deal more or less damage than Static Shift, but if it deals more damage, it really does feel like a no-brainer. It's a shame that it would uh, potentially mean um, giving up on Static Shift, which is, you know, really nice to have on Vayne for the wave clear. But, uh, you know, if Static Shift is just, or sorry, if Storm Razor is just so strong that it's, like, even better than Static Shift, despite Static Shift being perfect for her, then, you know, it's just too much energy to pass up on. Um... <clears throat> If you were to do Storm Rezzer, you just do whatever, you know, the same builds you would already do. Uh, Triforce is currently the best mythic on Vayne, so you would do Storm Rezzer into Triforce. I'm guessing also if you wanted to do, there's no sample size on this, but if you wanted to do the Lethality of Vayne playstyle, which, currently, you know, previously would be Static Shiv into Essence Reaver into Lethality, I prefer Dustblade over Yomus, then currently you just do Storm Rezzer into Essence Reaver 
into Yomas. I assume that should still work perfectly well. All right, and I think that was everything that I wanted to cover. We definitely covered everything within the patch notes. Oh yeah, I will just give a shout out to Zeri being in C tier here. I do occasionally like get a lot of comments either on my tier list or on my shorts talking about Zeri. Like, what you don't know what you're talking about, man. Every challenger is playing Zeri right now. How can you say Zeri's not good at the moment? How can you say she's C tier when every player in challenger is playing Zeri? Sir, this is a low elo tier list. You, you, you people who I'm trying to give advice on what you should play to climb, you are not challenger. You do not have challenger mechanics. Zeri is an extremely hard mechanic champion. Very mechanically complicated. Because even, even if you're hitting every single Q, you can partially miss them. You can graze the opponent and only a third of your bullets do damage. Right? That is a mechanic that is unique to Zeri. You can hit every Q and still do less damage than you could be doing. You, you know the meme where people say, like, um, when I play, when I play um, uh, Shaco, I just do so much less damage than when the enemy team plays Shaco or something like that, whatever. Or uh, when I play Kaisa, I just do way less damage than this challenger streamer that's playing Kaisa. Uh, obviously, you're, it's not entirely true. Obviously, you're not doing less damage. If you if you auto attack, your auto attack does as much damage as their auto attack does. You're just not as good as applying that damage or using the damage as the challenger streamer is. But in Zeri's case, it is actually 100% true. The challenger streamer is doing more damage on Zeri than you are, even if you still hit every Q, because you're not hitting every single Q with 100% accuracy where it does 100% damage. You are doing... Reduce damage on a significant number of autos because your aim is not perfect. All right, and this applies to most of the tier list, by the way, right? I am, like, accounting somewhat for, you know, I've put Draven in B tier, even though in, like, a, a, the hands of a player who's terrible on him, he's C tier. Because I'm assuming that at least the player would be somewhat proficient on Draven. And so if you're somewhat proficient on, proficient on Draven in low elo, you know, so long as you're somewhat proficient on him, then he should be B tier. But on Zeri... Um, like, the low elo standard for being proficient on her is still terrible. You just cannot achieve what a challenger player can achieve on Zeri. You cannot. She is too hard for that. So that is why she is C tier. Right? Just wanted to cover that, because I get a lot of shit on that, on this particular placement. And it just would not make sense to advise a low elo player to play Zeri. I'm sorry, but it does not. Even I would not advise myself to play Zeri. I would need a lot of practice on her to actually like make her worth picking over any of these other ADCs for me. And that's coming from somebody who already has master mechanics. I would still need a lot of work just to make, to, just to bring my Zeri up to the level of all these other ADCs for myself. <coughs> but yeah, okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tier list. Let me know any questions, thoughts, feedback you have, and I'll make sure to answer it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Later gamers.